Hey there, iOS developers. Interested in getting started with remote config on iOS? Well, you've come to the right place. Let's update our app from the cloud on this episode of Firecasts. So here's my app that I'm gonna configure using Firebase Remote Config. I've got a button here in my view controller and you can see that off in the code, I've added both the button as an IB outlet as well as the constraint that positions it near the top of the screen. So in the course of the screencast, we're gonna do three things. First, we're gonna take our two values, the text of the button and the constant of our constraint and give them to a remote config as defaults. Second, we'll ask remote config to download any new values from the cloud if they exist. And third, we'll wire up our app to use these new values so that we can change the look of our button from the Firebase console without having to touch our app. So go ahead and get your own app to follow along with. As long as you have a few values of your own to play with, you should be just fine. So I've already gone ahead and created a project in the Firebase console, it set up CocoaPods, configured my Xcode project, and initialized Firebase. Don't know what I'm talking about? Check out this getting started video first. All right, so next up, we need to make sure that remote config is actually installed. So go to your pod file here and add the Firebase slash remote config pod if it's not in there yet. Run a pod install, and then open up your XE workspace. And all right, looks like we're ready to use remote config. Uh, but before we do, maybe let's take a little moment to understand how remote config generally works. So with remote config, you first start off by giving it a bunch of default values stored as key value pairs. And these are just defined locally by your app. Next, you're gonna tell remote config to fetch updated values from the cloud. Very often, this will be just a subset of the default values that you supply, right? Like you only need to supply these new values from the cloud when they're different from the defaults that you have locally. Remote config will then keep these values in kind of a cached holding pattern on the device until you tell it to apply them. Now, the reason these values don't get applied automatically is that you could get into weird situations when your app's values change, like right while your user's in the middle of using your app, and that could get all sorts of weird. So when you tell remote config to activate these recently downloaded values, they will then be applied on top of whatever values you already have. At that point, when you ask to retrieve a value for a certain key, remote config will either give you the default value or a newer value that it's downloaded from the cloud. Make sense? All right, well, let's try that now in our app. So before I do anything else, let's go ahead and import the Firebase module. Remember, this is all I need to do, no matter what Firebase CocoaPod I've got installed. Now I'll start by creating a setup remote config method in which I'll supply my default values. There's a couple of ways you can set up default values in remote config. You can either add them through a plist or you can use an NS dictionary. I'm gonna go with the dictionary approach here. So let's create our NS dictionary with our button text equal to, let's call it default, and our button constraint constant key equal to, oh, let's say 50. And yes, if this were a real app, I wouldn't wanna be typing out the names of these keys like that. That's, that's kind of bad form. So our recommendation here is go ahead and put all the values you might ever wanna change into this dictionary of default values, right? Like all your hard-coded strings, your magic numbers, what, you know, what have you. In essence, this should replace whatever app constants file you've got lying around in your app. Yes, we all have one of those, I know. So remember, you only download values from the cloud that are different from your defaults. So adding all these defaults won't increase the size of your network calls, but it will give you the flexibility to change any of those values later if you want. You don't wanna be in a position three months later when you decide, oh, you know, I really should change the speed of my animations and realize that that animation speed hasn't been wired up to use remote config. Next up, we can access remote config, which we'll always do through the remote config shared singleton instance, and we'll call set defaults, and then pass along that dictionary. All right, so far so good. Now that we have defaults, we'll fetch in any new values from the cloud. So uh, let's create a second fetch remote config method to do that. So one method you could call at this point is fetch with completion handler. This method by default will only fetch new values if the ones it already has are more than 43,200 seconds old, which is 12 hours to you and me. But that's also a long time to wait if you're trying to test out remote config changes in your app. So instead, I'm gonna call fetch with expiration duration completion handler and give our expiration duration a value of say zero seconds to make sure I'm always fetching a new version. Now normally this would cause our app to get throttled pretty badly by the remote config service, but you can fix this by turning on developer mode, which essentially removes this calls per user throttle for a small number of users. I'll create a settings object with developer mode enabled set to yes or true if you're on Swift. We can now set our config settings to be this new object, and we're good to go. This will let your app fetch remote config values a lot more frequently without getting throttled, 
but don't do this in production, remote config will stop working. In fact, I kind of like sticking everything behind a debug flag, sort of like this. We'll pull out our expiration time into a separate variable, can set it to zero if we're in debug mode and 43,200 if we're not. And uh, yeah, that's probably a little safer. Anyway, we can now go ahead and fetch these new values. And uh, I'm gonna do two things in our completion handler. First off, I'll print out a happy little message to our console, and then we'll also call activate fetch. Remember, this tells remote config that it's okay to take those values that we fetch from the cloud and apply them on top of our current values. So we'll run this, and we can see that we've successfully made a call to the internet. Hooray! Of course, we're not actually doing anything with any of these values in remote config, so our app looks exactly the same as before. Let's tackle that next. So I'm gonna create a method called update view, which will basically set my button text and constraints based on the values I get back from remote config. And I'm gonna call it in two places. First uh, up here, right after I set up my default values. And then again here in my fetch callback so I can apply any new values that might've come in. Now calling self from within a block like this could lead to a retain cycle. So just to be safe, I'm gonna add a weak self reference in here, a little like this. There we go, that's, that's better. Now grabbing values from remote config is pretty straightforward. You're going to call the config value for key method, which retrieves the corresponding value from remote config. You can also access these values directly with bracket notation, sort of like this, which is a little nicer sometimes. Now these values have a type of remote config value. You can think of it kind of like an NS object, but you're almost never going to use them directly. Instead, you're going to call one of its follow-up methods, string value, number value, data value, and so on, to convert it to a usable data type. It is up to you to know what type of value you're expecting and call the appropriate method so that remote config can parse it correctly. So going back to my app here, I'm now going to set my button's title to remote config, config value for key, button text, because that's the, that's the key, and then string value. And then I'm going to set my constraints constant to remote config, config value for key, button constraint constant, number value, which is an NS number, and then float value to get the value as a CG float. Now I can run this, and you can see that my button's text and position are being set by the remote config object. It's pulling all of its values from the defaults right now, but let's see what happens if I set these new values in the Firebase console. So I'm gonna head over to the Firebase console for my project, and I'm going to select the remote config tab. You can see that I'm being asked to create my first parameter, so let's do that. So the uh, key parameter here is really just the name of the key that I wanna change. And I'll start by adding button text here, and we'll change its value to hello from the cloud. I don't need to add quotes here or anything. Everything's basically saved as a string at this point. And uh, that's it. We'll run it and check it out. We got some new values. You may have noticed there was this tiny moment when my text flickered from the default value to the newest values after it loaded them from the remote config service. And remember, that's because I called applied fetched immediately instead of waiting for a more opportune moment. I won't see this again if I run my app again, because any values that are applied stay applied. So you're not gonna start off with pure defaults every time you, you open up or start up your app. Oh, but you know, for fun, let's change the value of this constraint constant too. We'll change it to something like this and run it again. And uh, woo, look at that button scoot down. So that's the basics of remote config for you. There are certainly some other topics to cover, including delivering different values to different users, running an A-B test, and applying fetch data intelligently so that you don't get that little flicker when your app gets new values, all of which are very good topics for future videos. In the meantime, please check out the remote config documentation and go configure your apps from the cloud.